Hey everyone, welcome back to Accounting Basics. Today we're diving into IFRS accounting, what it is, why it matters, and how it affects businesses around the world. If you've ever scratched your head over balance sheets, profit statements, or wondered what fair value really means, this video is for you. So grab your coffee and let's get started. Imagine this. You're an investor looking at two companies in different countries. One, let's say, in Germany and one maybe in Brazil. They're in the same industry and both look profitable, but their financial statements are like apples and oranges. How do you compare them fairly? That's exactly the problem IFRS is trying to solve. It's the universal language of accounting. And if you want to understand how global business works, you need to know the basics. Let's start with the obvious. What does IFRS even mean? IFRS stands for International Financial Reporting Standards. These are a set of accounting rules and guidelines developed by the International Accounting Standards Board, or the IASB, which is a nonprofit based in London. The goal? was to create transparent, comparable, and consistent financial statements across the globe. Instead of each country having its own unique accounting system, IFRS allows investors, regulators, and businesses to speak the same language. Over 140 countries currently require or permit IFRS, including the UK, the EU, Australia, and much of Asia and South America. The big exception? The United States, which still uses USGAAP. More on that in another video. All right, so how does IFRS work in practice? Let's look at five core principles you need to understand. One, accrual basis. IFRS uses accrual accounting which means revenues and expenses are recorded when they are earned or incurred, not when cash changes hands. This gives a more accurate picture of a company's financial health. 2. Going concern. This assumes the company will continue operating into the foreseeable future. Unless there's evidence to the contrary, you don't assume the business is shutting down. 3. Consistency. Companies should apply the same accounting policies year after year unless a change is justified. This helps with comparability over time. 4. Prudence IFRS encourages caution. Don't overstate assets or income, and don't underestimate liabilities. If there's uncertainty, choose the less optimistic outcome. And 5. Fair presentation Financial statements should give a true and fair view of a company's financial position, performance, and cash flows. These principles are the foundation of everything in IFRS. Under IFRS, companies are required to produce four key financial statements. First, the statement of financial position. This is your balance sheet. It shows assets, liabilities, and equity at a specific point in time. Second, a statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income. A fancy way of saying income statement. It shows revenue, expenses, and profits. Thirdly, a statement of changes in equity. This shows movement in owner's equity over the given period. And four, statement of cash flows. This tracks cash inflows and outflows from operating, investing, and financing activities. These give the stakeholders a 360-degree view of how the company is really doing. A common question is, how is IFRS different from GAAP, which is Generally Accepted Accounting Principles? Here are three quick differences. Rules versus Principles GAAP, or GAAP, we'll call it, is more rule-based, while IFRS is principle-based, giving companies more judgment in how they apply standards. 
inventory. IFRS doesn't allow LIFO, which is last in, first out, as an inventory method. GAP does. Development costs. Under IFRS, certain development costs can be capitalized. GAP is stricter and usually expenses them. Each has its pros and cons, but IFRS is generally seen as more flexible and globally minded. So why should you care about IFRS? If you're a student, it's part of most accounting, finance, and MBA programs. If you're an investor, understanding IFRS helps you analyze international companies. If you work in finance or audit, it's essential knowledge especially if you work with global clients. And if you're a business owner expanding internationally, adopting IFRS can improve your credibility and access to global capital. In a global economy, knowing IFRS is like having a universal passport for business. And that's a wrap on the basics of IFRS accounting. We covered what it is, the key principles, the main financial statements, and how it stacks up against GAAP. Let me know in the comments, do you prefer IFRS or GAAP? Or are you just trying to survive your accounting class? If this video helped you, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our future videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.